Okay, so we're finally at the point that you've all been waiting for. This course is called function, so let's talk about what a function is. Um, everything is under the definition of a relation. You know relations as an independent variable, your x, and your dependent variable, which is your y. And those two together make your ordered pairs, which are your coordinates. Now, under the big umbrella relation, are functions and non-functions. Now a function is a set of ordered pairs, but if you have an x value, you can only have one y value. If you have more than one y value, then it's not a function anymore. Okay, and an easy way to tell is using the vertical line test. So for one a, here's my vertical line. You can use your pencil. I'm just gonna drag it across my graph. Now at every single point, it only touches my green line once that means that it is a function. In other words, if say for example um, x was 8, okay, there is a corresponding y value, it looks like about 9 on the y-axis is where the green line touches the black line. So for one x value, 8, I get one y value, 9. But if you take a look at the next one, it does hit the green line twice at some points. So for example, right here, when x is negative 4, that's one x value, I all of a sudden have two y values, which is positive 6, and it looks like about 2. So this one fails the vertical line test, meaning it's not a function. And let's try a couple of other ones. All right, I think you're starting to get the hang of it. Take your vertical line and it looks like it only touches once, so this is a yes. It is a function. But I think you can just imagine the next one, obviously all of a sudden touches twice. This one is a no, it is not a function. Okay, so let's just go over it one more time. For example, if x was say two, I have a y value at the top, of about 9 and then I also have a y value at the bottom of about negative 9. So in those, I mean that's two y values for one x value therefore it doesn't go with the definition of a function. Now that we know about functions a little bit, let's talk about a domain and range. So if you're talking about a relation like 2a, here's a relation between x values and y values. You have five coordinates and if I decided to graph this, it'd just look like this. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, like five dots on your graph. You don't connect the dots because they've only given you the five coordinates. They haven't given you coordinates in between each of those dots. So your graph is like a scatter plot. Okay, now the domain is talking about um, all the x values in your relation. So since we're only talking about five dots, you're only going to have a limited number of uh, numbers for your domain. So the way that we write it is you put d equals 2 for domain, you open it up with a squiggly line, and then you're going to list off all the x values. Now the x values have to be in order from smallest to largest. Okay, so negative 4 is the smallest. 0 through, oh, ends up they're already in order. Okay, and then you close it off with a bracket. All right, um, they have to be in order and you're not allowed to repeat them. So if there was a double zero or two coordinates with a zero x um, value, then you only write the zero once, okay? Now when you're talking about range, you're talking about all the y values, the range of, you know, the, the dots. So r is gonna be all the y values now. In order, again, smallest to largest. And if there's any repeats, then you just list them once. And there you go. Okay, so that's what the domain and range uh, format will look like if they give you a set of coordinates. If you take a look at B, this is a different format now. They've given you um, a different way of looking at coordinates. I'm just gonna explain, here are all your X values and here are all your Y values. So what I've done is I've written down all of the corresponding coordinates on the right-hand side. So if they start the arrow here at 5 and then they go to 9, that means that it's uh, negative 5 and negative 9. Okay, 
So for instance, if you go from 0 to negative 2, it's 0, negative 2. And then 0 to 9, you get 0, 9. Okay, so I think you kind of got it. Uh, now that we know that this particular relationship has six coordinates, we again just want the domain and range. So the domain is all the x values in order, no repeats, negative 5, negative 1, there's a repeat of 0, so I'm only going to write it once, 1 and 3, and then the range exactly the same thing. So negative 9, negative 2, 1, repeat of 7, okay, and then the 9. All right. Now, those two are going to be different than the next three because uh, the next three is a continuous line. It's not just coordinates. So let's take a look at C. This is a continuous linear line. It goes on in both directions. And if we talk about all the x values you can have, um, the best way to think about it is like this. If x was 6, there is a corresponding dot on the graph that has an x value of 6. If x was negative 10, there's a dot on the graph with an x value of negative 10. Oh, well, it kind of is a little bit over, so that's negative 11. But if I even went really, really far and I said, okay, well, what if x was 50? I would still be able to have some sort of a dot because this line would go on forever. In other words, you have unlimited x values. Okay, you could even have an x value of 2.5 or 2.1. Those dots are on the graph. So how do you write that x could be anything? You write it like this, domain equals, open bracket, x belongs, so it looks like a, a C with a line or a curvy E, to all real numbers, so a double lined R. In other words, x could be anything. Okay. Now let's take a look at your y values. Well, could you have a y value of 3? Well, yeah, it's right there, that dot. Can you have a y value of negative 5? Yes, you can. It's actually right here. Could you have a y value of, say, negative 100? Well, yeah, because this is going to continue downwards, and eventually you're going to be able to have some sort of a point with a negative 100 value for your y. So this one also has a range of any real numbers. And you write it like this. Range equals, open, y for y values belongs to all real numbers. Okay, now these examples are a little bit different in terms of format. Um, a parabola. This one also has any real number for x's because it will open upwards forever. Okay, so as it opens wider and wider, you're going to still have an x value of 4. There is a point right there. You'll have an x value of 8. It's going to be all the way up here because this opens up. Since it opens up forever, it always has x values, which means your domain is all real numbers. It's actually your range that we're concerned about in this case. Notice that you don't have all y values. You can have a y value of 8. There's two dots right here that have a y value of 8. You can even have a y value of 0. It's right there. But what about everything underneath here, all the negative numbers? The graph never goes down there. So how do we limit um, the range in the domain? You write it like this. Range equals y belongs to all real numbers such that, so except, and then you place the exception on it, y has to be bigger than or equal to, and then the smallest number it could be is 0. You never have a height of anything below 0, but you could have a height of 0 and upwards. Okay. Now the last example is um, the circle. So let's talk about the range, or sorry, the domain. First of all, I only have x values between here and here. Anything outside of the circle, so for instance, an x value of 10, well, there's no graph along the 10 line. So your only x values are within the circle. An x value of, say, 2 gives you this point and this point. I think you get the idea. So 
how do we say that our x's have to be between negative 8 and 8? You write it like this. Domain equals, open bracket, x belongs to all real numbers such that, and then we say it has to be between negative 8 and 8. So you write it like this. Here's negative 8 and 8. You write the x in the middle, and then you got your less than or equal to signs. So in other words, negative 8 has to be less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8. Okay, now for a range. Any numbers between here and here, which is negative 8 to 8 again. Okay, because anything outside of that, the, the circle doesn't go that far. So your range, y belongs to all real numbers such that it's going to be between negative 8 and 8. Okay, now the very last thing I want to go over is um, the asymptotes. So an asymptote is a line that the curve always comes really, really close to, but it actually never touches. So for instance, um, we have a graph right here, and this is a reciprocal graph, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later. Um, let me just get a line out, and why don't we make it a red line, just so you can see it. Okay, so here's a graph that it looks like, or sorry, here's a line that it looks like the graph never ever touches. And this line, why don't we just make it dotted, and then we'll also give it some arrows. Oops. So let's try that one more time. We'll select this one dotted so that you can see it a little bit better, and then some arrows. There's a line right here. So again, this is always going to go towards it, but it never actually touches that line. Same with this dark line. Always goes towards the red, but it will never touch. This is called an asymptote. And if we think about it, there's actually another one. And that one goes down this way. Right there. So it seems like these end arrows also look like they're approaching this line, but they never ever touch it. Okay, and I'm just going to color code this one as well. Okay. What your job to do is you actually have to make the equations or write down the equations of um, each of the asymptotes. So the red one, the equation of this line is it looks like it crosses right through negative 3 right here. So this is a vertical line, which is an x equals negative 3 line, okay? Versus this one is at a height of 0. This is a y equals 0 line. So the two asymptotes are x equals negative 3 and y equals 0. 